Hey everybody. Um, so uh, we were going to do um, Isher's Weapon Shop, in the second part of um, Perilous Dark, and I realized that I just didn't have enough knolls. Um, <laughs> I uh, and and I I have some pre-painted ones. And then I have some ones that got like primed, you know, where they were like Xenophil primed. And I used them in games, I used them in D&D and stuff, and um, decided that, and also D&D uh, &D just put out a bunch of new ones. They, or they, they have one of the, the, their newest wave of, um, of minis that, you know, uh, aren't painted, like, that they, they put out some new sculpts, so I got those, and, um, but, yeah, I decided that I needed to paint up a, uh, a pack, a pack of gnolls. I don't even know what, what do you, what do you call a, a pack of hyenas? It's a pack of hyenas, right? A pack, a gnoll pack. But yeah, gnolls are cool. Like, they, you don't know, like, some of the, the lore behind them. They're, like, demon, werewolf, um, hyena pack, uh, just brutal, cruel uh, creatures, and um, I was like, I was watching a documentary about hyenas, like when I was doing research on them, because I wanted to paint them like hyenas. And you know, I learned that they're like, they're just, dude, they're so brutal, they're so cruel, even to each other. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, let's uh, do some painting. These are my. Um, these are the knolls that I have, these like pre-painted guys. And then these are, these are all like WizKids um, NECA guys. And I, I think they're really cool. I like them a lot. Here's uh, here's my, like uh, a WizKids um, human. And, uh, and then I got some big old barbarians, giant barbarians, and this is a wizard. I'm going to use these for Frostgrave, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I've had, have a lot of uh, gnolls that I need to paint. <laughs> so yeah, we tried to play, um, uh, let's see, yeah, Perilous Dark, and we ran out of gnolls. So we, uh, I need to, I need to paint the rest of these guys. But um, yeah, these guys have all been primed black. And now I'm just gonna go around and do some xenophil on everybody <clears throat> with the airbrush so that they all look more like this guy. I'm ready to go for painting. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Ooh, I shouldn't be touching these guys. That's what it looks like when um, when I'm done with the airbrush part, and then um, after that, I'm gonna come in with a um, like an off white, like this, and do a little bit of dry brushing. I just got these some new uh, P3 paints. I was watching one of John Nienis' videos, Ninjon, and uh, he recommended these colors. Grabbed a couple of these, the new colors I'm gonna try out, and then, um, yeah, but when I'm done, where's uh, somebody that's ready to go? Um, yeah, I already started on this guy a little bit. Uh, it's, but when I'm done, it's gonna have those kind of natural highlights and shadows in there. Like that. And then when I glaze over a color on top of it, I'm gonna keep those shadows. So I'm not gonna paint all of these guys today. I just, um, 
you know, I, I had a bunch of guys that were ready to go, ready to be primed. So I usually do these and um, I do all of my guys that are ready to be primed in a batch. So I'm gonna paint some knolls. And maybe some barbarians. Maybe a new uh, man arms or a wizard or something construct. <laughs> I'm gonna try some of this uh, Man Off White base stuff. It's a nice eggshell kind of color. A, uh, a soft makeup brush to do dry brushing. So I start at the top and work my way down. want to pick out stuff like this these wraps you know fingers um, just pick out details but I'm gonna use my um, my airbrush to tell me where those highlights and shadows belong okay yeah when I'm done I want them to look like that and that's all the paint prep Okay, got my wet palette ready to go. Got all these new colors that I got that I want to try. Um, I'm looking at some reference art that I found of some cool moles. Let me do some paint. So let's see what this guy. Uh, you know, classic kind of brown fur. This guy, I was kind of going for something a little lighter. I wanted to do like a, um, you know, like hyena uh, leopard spot kind of look. But let's see, this guy, I think I already put some shade on here, on his, uh, on his armor, a few different places. Um, and then, uh, I'm going to try some of this rucksack tan. Do a little bit of uh, some highlights with this. See how it looks. I'm kind of using like the side of the brush more, you know, to pick up those raised edges instead of the, um, the tip. So let's see on this guy who's like super light. Um, I think I'm gonna try giving him some like kind of gray fur with like leopard spots. I mean, he's already most of the way there. Um, let's see.
I'm just gonna leave this fur kind of gray. A nice black nose. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's a cool looking uh, fur. And then maybe some little spots in there. Yeah, I'm taking that. I like that a lot. Some of my uh, DIY contrast paint to do some leather on these guys. You can check out my video about how I make my own like airbrush friendly um, contrast paint. And for these wraps, I'm gonna do something else. Um, I'm gonna do light, kind of a light weather. I think I'm gonna highlight them with this, but to get the shadows in, kind of a like yellow ochre color. Oops, this grass. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, gaming sepia first. And then I'm going to mix that with this. Just a little brush full. gaming should make it a little more transparent. Go over all these wraps.
So I'm really digging these uh, lighter looking moles. <laughs> uh, these guys. I think I'm gonna mix up uh, like kind of an orange color. Um, let's start with some, I think I'm just gonna use this, uh, this color that I mixed up and add a little bit of yellow to that. It's the nice thing about the wet palette is you can just play on it, make all kinds of cool colors. Not so good if you're painting a whole bunch of like space marines or something and you want them to all look the same. <laughs> but great if you want them everybody to look different. You know, you wanna want all your knolls to look a little bit different. So this guy is a little bit lighter. Um, his prime is a little bit lighter, so that's gonna work a little bit better better with this color. Just gonna water it down a little bit. And I'm mostly trying to get those, um, these lighter parts, you know, because I want, uh, basically just going to leave my shadows pretty dark. Not really going to worry about, um, painting over the shadows as much as the, like I'm, I'm going to take the pigment, you know, and sort of push it so that it ends up back more in the, the highlights. Okay, I'm liking those highlights. So I'm just gonna put in some shadows. Just a, mm, yeah. Maybe I'll try this, this color. It's bloodstone. Another new color. Hmm. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm just gonna come back and redefine the highlights after I've done. I'm gonna come in and do some shadows and then sort of redefine the highlights. I'm gonna make his mane nice and bright too. No, actually I don't like that as much. Maybe a darker mane. I like it. Cool. Okay, now that this guy's mostly dry, I'm gonna come in 
and re-highlight with some of this rucksack tan. So far, I'm actually really liking the uh, the lighter shades, uh, lighter fur on these guys a lot better. So, so far, I'm just really liking the look of a darker fur. I'm sorry, a lighter fur and a darker mane, if that makes sense. Um, so I think I'm just gonna keep going with, I'm like, I really like this uh, kind of orange, you know, look, or like maybe try some more of this rucksack tan. It's kind of a tan color, see how that looks. I don't know if I like the yellow more or the tan. It's starting to look like lions though. I guess hyenas are a little bit, they do have lighter color fur. But they kind of have splotchy fur. I'm liking the yellow a lot more than I thought I would. Yellow looks good on them. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I did a little research. I watched a, um, <laughs> a documentary about hyenas. And um, so they're actually like a lot lighter than I thought they were. And so far the light, the light looking, you know, very light fur guys are my favorite. Um, I mean, like by far. I just really like how they look. Um, and, you know, with just like some little pieces of like chain mail around them. I mean, it is a very light paint job. Um, but I'm thinking about maybe, so, you know, like I want some guys that look more like knights. So I'm thinking about going for almost like a samurai kind of look or, or like, um, so yeah, I wanna try this color. I think I'm gonna wash this stuff to give it more of like a dirty steel look later. I'm gonna try this, um, this deep red that I got. Let's see, Sanguine Base, it's another P3 color. So I'm 
just gonna do some trim on these guys. And I know that samurai, you know, if they were samurai, that this would not, like, these pieces would be, like, leather, I think. Samurai armor is, you know, it's actually, like, very flexible. Um, it isn't, like, a heavy armor, like, a, you know, a knight or something like it's not made of metal. But uh, yeah, I like that look. It's a cool look. So uh, I did up a bunch of these guys, like half of them with uh, kind of a more like yellowish fur. Um, just, you know, worked my way from a darker color up to a yellowish color and then kind of glazed that on. Um, and like the lighter I go, like so far, I, I mean, I do like these guys. I like the kind of, they look kind of more like lions. Um, or more like wild dogs, you know? Um, and yeah, I mean, I like the look a lot, but so far, this guy is my favorite. Gray is my favorite. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep the ones that I did like this, like very, you know, sort of yellowish and orange, and and then I'm gonna do the other half. Well, so I wanna do half and half. I want half of them to be sort of yellowish, and then, or orange and yellow, and then half to be um, uh, gray, like a very light gray, like this guy, because so far this guy's my favorite. Um, but the, the, like these are my, my oops my pre-painted guys that I have, you know? And like the brown just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Um, I really like, I really dig the gray. I like the gray a lot better. So I think I'm just gonna do the rest of these guys. I'm gonna finish these guys up with yellow and then do the rest of them uh, gray. And I tried to do some kind of leopard spots, um, but uh, Jerry's still out on those. Kind of like the solid, uh, solid fur better than the, the leopard spots. Although you know, it, they like these. I only have a few different sculpts, uh, so the more like different I can make them look, the better. But I'm surprised how, how light, you know, it looks really good going very light with these guys. Like, I never paint with yellow. And I'm really liking the look on these guys. Just a color I just never use. So I'm gonna try and do one with a um, sort of light mane, and then do gray fur. Maybe a little bit of white.
Sort of going back and forth on this guy a little bit. I like him. I, I wanted to uh, you know, have a different color mane on him, but um, there's just like a lot there, and I feel like it looks better as like one kind of solid, you know, just mass of fur. <laughs> but I am really liking him having some, uh, you know, gray on him, some different shades of gray. Uh, so. Um, I kind of like having the browns in there anyways, like in the shadows and stuff. I just want to kind of draw in some, uh, some highlights, some, you know, very light fur highlights on him. I think I'll just give him a uh, dark armor. So for his uh, quilted thing, um, I don't think I'm going to make that metallic. I think I'm going to make it sort of like a quilted, um, like a padded leather armor. So I'm going to use some of my uh, more of my uh, DIY contrast paints. Make like kind of a deep red to work from uh, everywhere. Mix in some of this sanguine red. These are very dense, you know, and I want to thin them out a little bit. Well, now I'm going to let that dry before I, um, try to, you know, sort of edge highlight it. I think I'm just gonna dry brush it to pick up all the little um, scaly bits. Use some more of this Minop white base to do some bones on these guys. This guy's skirt is mostly dry. I'm gonna uh, sort of dry brush over that. Use some Kato Red. And a makeup brush. And uh, let's throw some shade on the armor. Some game wash. Use some of this black wash on the fur too. I kind of like how that looks. Just getting all those little crevices.
I decide that I'm going to keep one of these guys pretty close to his, uh, his zenithal, <laughs> his, uh, you know, his undercoat, because I really like the, the grays you know, that he's got. So I'm just going to kind of go around and like get rid of some of the powdery, like dry brush kind of look. Sort of redefine uh, the highlights a little bit. And, uh, and then uh, I'm going to make everything else more colorful. I think this might be my favorite of all the sculpts though, of all these guys. <laughs> really like it. So let's see. It's reds. main a uh, black color just trying to um, let my uh, my airbrush layer, you know, do most of the work for me. Need some, some leathers. And I'm gonna use this, this for these wraps. the wire <laughs> these guys I need to get them done so that we can use them in our game um, <clears throat> so far this guy I still I really like these guys the best like the the gray I just I really like it a lot you know with the black mane uh, so but what I did on this guy was I <clears throat> I tried to do some kind of light browns on him but I threw some shade on him, or no, it's not that guy, it's this guy. Yeah, tried to make him sort of have some of those, um, you know, uh, nice light colors, nice, nice light um, grays and stuff mixed in with the brown, and I like him a lot, but I threw some black shade on him all over. Um, I still need to finish doing his armor stuff. Um, I should do that. But I think I want to do that on everybody because I really like how it looks. Like if these guys were, you know, humans or elves or something like that, I wouldn't. But since they're, they have, they're, they're all, they're all furry guys. Um, I like how it looks. So I'm just using some, some shade, some uh, game color wash. Or, you know, I guess if you were using Citadel, you'd use like, um, Gnome Oil you know, or out of rack starts shade and maybe a mix of the two. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of throw some shade all over these guys. And, uh, and then, you know, like on armor and stuff like that, it looks really good. It, it really defines all of like the little scales and stuff, you know, on stuff like this. Uh, and then, but also, you know, I'm liking it on their fur and stuff too. It just really, um, it kind of defines things, you know, and, and then where I don't want it, like these are supposed to be little leopard spots, um, but where, you know, where I don't want it, I'm gonna just brush it 
uh, like push it down into areas where I do want it. Like I'm gonna keep it off of like raised surfaces and stuff and then, you know, push it down into the little recesses where I want it and not let it pull on any, you know, surfaces like up here. I'm gonna pull it down so that it's, you know, coming down and collecting in the shadows where I actually do want it. But yeah, so far, really liking the gray fur the best. Okay, so everybody got you know, a wash in some uh, shader and um, I like, you know, I, I want to brighten them up a little bit because I really like the, um, the light, you know, paint job. So I think I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna, I might do, uh, no, I think I'm gonna leave the, the for the way it is because I'm happy with it. Um, but I'm gonna go around and do the wraps on these guys. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna highlight with some of this um, uh, Nocturna Forest Skin. Well, it's Vallejo. It's uh, like a, a version of Game Color Fantasy, Fantasy Pro. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna grab a smallish brush. Mm, yeah, that'll work. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of go like sideways like this. Pick out some spots to highlight because the shade just really darkened things up a lot. I want to brighten it up a little bit. But otherwise, besides that, I think I just want to get like metal and stuff. Um, I just, you know, kind of did a, a very light dry brush on this and then left this part dark from the Zenithal and, um, but I think what, what I'm going to do is, um, you know, I still need to get like these guys who have a lot of armor on them. They're gonna be my knight tools. So I'm gonna highlight with metallic colors to, uh, to get like shiny reflective metal after I've done some highlighting with them um, on their, you know, their wraps, whatever this is, like linen or leather or whatever it is human skin, you know, you know how moles are. Just gonna go around and do all of these guys' wraps. Okay, and finally, time to do some uh, metallic metals on these guys. Um, yeah, so I almost always do uh, metallic paints last because I don't want to contaminate all the other colors on my palette. Um, it's really easy to just get, you know, a little bit of metallic color somewhere you know on your palette and then turn every color that you have into a metallic color so um i might just do a little bit of dry brushing usually like i'll even paint right out of the pot like this with metallic colors just because um 
they're, you know, they go everywhere. So, and also when I'm doing metallic highlights, I always do, um, uh, I only do like the top parts that, you know, would actually be reflecting light because if you look at metal in shadow, it's not reflective. Like metal in the dark is just like black. It doesn't, you know, it's not, when it's not picking up light, it isn't reflecting any light back. So when I'm doing metals, I, I leave the shadows like black. I don't make them a shade of, you know, metallic color. And I feel like it really just draws your eye in, you know, a lot when you make a, just a few little highlights of um, metallic colors instead of, you know, like all over and then put a shade over it or something like that and then make it look like oily steel. Like I feel like this looks like a better oily steel, you know, to have spots that are black and then other spots that are, you know, shiny and reflective. So, and it's also pretty quick, <laughs> pretty quick and painless to just dry brush like that. But like this guy, for example, you can see on his swords that this spot is, you know, a lighter shade of gray, that this is a black. So I want to keep that, you know, with my final paint job, I want to accentuate that even kind of like cartoonishly so, you know. So yeah, I'll do something, you know, like that, where one side is just black and then the other side is nice and shiny. Makes it look like their weapons are actually sharp. <laughs> and then if I do want to put like a really sharp edge on, then I'll use, um, I'll use uh, Vallejo, like either this is silver or, um, uh, so model air, you know, is very, very fluid. It's, um, let me use this one here. I usually use the aluminum. Um, the, it's very fluid. So it goes on, you know, but this has very, very good coverage. Um, a little bit, it goes a very long way. So I'll just edge highlight with it, you know, just, you. Yeah. Knock that down a little bit. Just kind of, you know, to make it look like one edge of the weapon is just very sharp. And then the rest, you know, is so sharp, but, you know, you really, that's the pointy end. Like that. Okay, and uh, last but not least, I'm going to take some pigments and I'm going to throw them on the uh, bases, um, just to simulate some kind of dirt. But I need to paint the rims black on these guys too. And that might look like a lot, um, just but the, when you hit them with uh, varnish, it really dulls down pigments a ton. So you can kind of go crazy with the pigments a little bit because when you seal them down with some you know, some varnish, some lacquer, it's going to dull them down a ton. But I just like how that looks, it's like a dirt. Um, and yeah, and then to black my face is, I'm gonna use my favorite black straight out of the pot. Got some P3 thin more black. And I'm gonna use a flat like this. Doesn't need to be a good one. And then uh, I'm gonna come around and just hit everybody uh, on the edge of the base like this. Sometimes I like to like stick my 
my, you know, my pinky up to things like this when I'm doing stuff like this to like stabilize it and then sort of like rotate it against my finger. I feel like it's easier to, you know, sort of rotate them and let that do the work than to really eyeball it with the brush. There we go, all done. So here's the uh, pre-painted guys. And um, I like the, I like them still. I'm not getting rid of them. But uh, but yeah, here's the, uh, the painted guys. And uh, I might, you know, I, I like my pre-painted guys. I might even repaint them later. I might strip them and repaint them and make them look more like these guys. The more knolls, the better. In fact, I'm thinking about getting some some of the Frostgrave knolls, the official like North Star Frostgrave knolls, because they're a lot smaller. Um, like the Frostgrave minis are just teeny tiny compared to like D and D minis or. Um, uh, Game of Thrones minis, which I've been using for uh, for Frostgrave, but all of my stuff is around like 32 millimeters. But you know, Knolls, I mean, there's there's no alphas, and like there's there's big ones, and then there's little ones, and um, so yeah, I'm I, I love my Knolls, so probably gonna get some more. But these guys are a real good start. But uh, but yeah, anyways, um, thanks for watching, you guys, and. Uh, Welcome to all new subscribers, and yeah, it's uh, it's been cool to see the channel grow a lot lately, and uh, you know, a lot of people are enjoying Frostgrave and stuff, and painting, and yeah, so uh, take care of yourselves, and stay safe, and go out and paint something, you know, get a hobby, do something creative. Alright, peace out.